Welcome back, Red Spotters. Another show here in Red Spotlight Entertainment. I'm your host today, Alexis J. Soto, and I'm joined by my friends. I think they're my friends. We'll see. Kyle Lira, Peter Martinez, and Alexis Moreno. How are you all doing today? Alive. <laughs> or... Yeah. Yeah, that, that seems to be kind of a feeling that we have overall. Um, it's just kind of blah. <laughs> And not going in any direction whatsoever. But today we are here to finally conclude our series, our four-part series, where all of us went back into, you know, one of Kyle's favorite words, the crevices of our childhood, and we pulled out some, you know, uh, deep cuts of our, uh, <laughs> what made us basically like the kind of movies that we do. Our impression movie series, whatever you want to call it, is finally here. And uh, in the last few episodes, we had, you know, Peter go first and we had Moreno. And then last week, we had Kyle. And so today, we're going to end it all with me. Um, so, yeah, that's the show. This is episode 241. You? Yeah, we're going to end me. This is my last <laughs> appearance <laughs> on Red Spotlight <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> it's because Alexis was canceled. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll be canceled at the end of the, of the podcast. And um, after that, then you guys will carry on without me. So, yeah. Oh, no. Don't yeah. That'll. Right. Well. Uh, and before we get into it, I do want to also, because we are approaching the end of June, and just to also catch up and remind people once again, especially our audience that have been listening on Wooshka, we are leaving Wooshka. When for the last time on the 28th of June of June on the 28th of oh, June was <laughs> weird June. the 28th of June <laughs> <laughs> June 28th we'll be at Awushka forever um, our new permanent home at least permanent quote, you know quotation marks is castbox.fm and of course if you listen to Spotify and on iTunes and uh, then that nothing will change so that's that um, and so, uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and get into the movies that I have, unless we have any other preamble comments that anybody wants to get out of the way with. Let's do this, bitch. What's your movies? Tonight, AOC won her second term. Congrats. <laughs> Congratulations to AOC. That's right. Any other, uh, <laughs> I don't know, shout outs, birthday wishes. Um, oh, we forgot to, we, we keep forgetting to mention Sergio. Um, <laughs> this has been a long running thing. Alexis had told me, I think months ago, that, uh, you know, one of her friends, Sergio, listens to a lot of our shows and seems to enjoy what he does. Doing. So, yeah, from what I hear, Sergio. Why? Yeah. I, I was going to ask that same question. Sergio, you could do so Why? much better. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Alexis Moreno kind of like curates the, the episodes that he listens oh, to. Oh, okay. Which ones do you give him? No, I don't. Well, oh. some you've recommended, I think, right? Well, I... I She's given him In the Alexis beginning, I, he like asked if you guys would talk about the movies when you guys reviewed them. And I... Like, the ones that you guys were coming out at the time, I would just be like, don't listen to this one because they mentioned, like, all of these things. And he's like, okay, I'll watch it first, and then I'll go back and listen to it. That's it, though. I wouldn't tell him, like, don't listen to this one. No, don't do this one. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, hi, Sergio. Hi, thank you for listening. Uh... I hope you appreciate the content. I hope we <laughs> I haven't driven you to complete insanity yet. Welcome. You're a red spotter now. Yay. David, you got some comp. <laughs> David's got some serious comp. Well, Sergio hasn't been on the show yet. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we don't want to make it a habit where, like, the only people we're aware of the that are actual listeners, we get into the show. Like that. The, <laughs> yeah, let's come the on. The only reason David was on the show was because he won the Red Spotlight contest. Uh, oh, raffle. yeah, the Red Spotlight contest of 2017. And he got, he got his own uh, 
his own special day to <laughs> yeah we recorded yeah. we took him to eat there was a picture <laughs> It was a giveaway. <laughs> yeah. A uh, free t-shirt, too. <laughs> that was for the 100th episode, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so. Was, that was his first time on a podcast? I think so. Yeah, because you guys were like... <laughs> <laughs> he won the contest. The viewer call-in contest. So, you know, here he is. Yeah, he was caller 36. <laughs> He won. <laughs> Sergio, maybe it's uh maybe it's your turn next. <laughs> we'll take it you know, easy. It, it, it is one thing we should say um before we, we jump into the programming today. Um more so than any other time, especially these last I wanna say four months with the pandemic. This show has just entirely become therapy at this point. Um, so if if anyone can listen to us just basically scream and cry into the void, thank you. Um, <laughs> you kind of help us, you know, to with, the you know, our... to the few listeners in Germany and Africa, according to the insights. Uh, thank you for listening as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it changed. Yeah, that was a thing. It changed We're... since Germany now. <laughs> we have some in Germany, yeah. We have we have uh, we have a fan base in Africa. Everyone, we're huge. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Not in America, though. Uh, I think. Uh, I mean, I think Brazil okay. and Chile. Brazil and Chile. I rather. And that's I it. rather have fans all across the world. We can be uh, international. International. Is it multinational? Or whatever. Probably the same hit. thing. International <laughs> phenomenal. It's like some bands, like they they're popular everywhere else except for like except, a certain region. Yeah. yeah. Like what's his name uh, that was popular in Germany? Oh, Bo- uh, David Bowie was huge in Germany. No, fuck David Bowie. Uh, what's his name? Wow. He starred in the best film ever, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Oh, David, David Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> but he was big as an actor here, though. Eh, big is... Um, we have different definitions of big. The point being, we could be the David Hasselhoff of podcasts. Zardu Hasselfrau. Okay. Croissant. That's all I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the main topic here. Right, right. Well, you know, it, it, first I want to say I am very happy with how this, you know, this series has turned out. I think Peter had a wonderful idea, uh, you know, getting reacquainted with our earlier selves. Um, and kind of, I feel anyway, in most cases, we have found, you know, new stuff about each other that we didn't previously um, know. Because, you know, at that part of our lives, none of us had no connection to each other. So we were kind of, in many ways, different people. So overall, I'm very happy with it. And also a preemptive fuck you to Kyle Lyra, because after last week, I had to completely rethink what movies I had, because you kind of wiped me out. Um, like, at least a I good half of the- I told you to put a limit. A half of them. And I did put a limit. Kyle didn't listen to me. So, I mean, oh. I can't control what he does. He just, he, you act as if I, like, let him do it. He said, I have more movies. Kiss my ass. Is I created the what show. I got. So, You're an enabler. I, I can't, I can't really, you know, enabler. say anything about it. If you want to throw crap in anyone's direction, Kyle is right there. You can tell him to kiss your ass right now if you want. Um, I, I don't but go, as far as, I go after the enabler. Okay, so you're part of the problem then. Um, the, the point is that you're in part this of the particular problem. situation, the though, so a lot of the movies uh, that Kyle had, I also uh, had a particular connection to. So I kind of had to dump those out and rethink um, what I had. Um, so you're welcome. I'm not going to have many, I feel, I think I'll, I may have 10 or 11. I mean, let me just. Uh, Look at it real quick to see where we are with it. 
Yeah, it would be around, yeah, 11 movies or so. Okay. So uh, what I have right here, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, aside from one of them, I think these have not been uh, mentioned in the other shows. So uh, here we go. Um, so I have Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. I have uh, Alexis Moreno's favorite E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Q the U. Uh, I also have Jurassic Park. That's uh-huh. three. Four is Child's Play, starring Chucky. Finster, Five isn't is an actor. Start the doll, <laughs> Chucky the doll. I mean, what? Shut the fuck up. Five Independence Day. Um, what is up with you and aliens? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's because he's one yeah. too. Guess I am as that well. Explain so uh, much. Speaking of that, six um, Lilo and Stitch. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. God damn. <laughs> okay. Six Lilo and Stitch. Seven Jaws. So there's the ocean. Eight. Finding Nemo. Um, you notice certain things, themes here. Nine, The Day After Tomorrow, Roland Emmerich. Ten, I have Pokemon, the Ew. first movie. Pokemon, the first one? Yes. Is the that ten? One. Is that ten? Yeah, it is the best one. Um, and then eleven would be Toy Story. But I believe Kyle mentioned that last week. <laughs> so I leave it in your hands to ask whatever you want then. Okay, uh, let, let's start with Toy aliens. Story. Aliens. Okay. Um, apparently somebody has a, has a thing for Roland Emmerich. So let's start with the, his two... His two films, The Day After Tomorrow and Independence Day. He loves mass extinction and genocide. <laughs> I don't know what it is with him. Yeah. <laughs> the, this is this definitely says a lot about... It's apparent it started at a young age. Yeah. But it definitely shines through <laughs> to adulthood. This, You know, I like to think that a lot of the movies that we grow up on kind of really shape who we are. In a lot of ways, and a lot of the lessons and values that we carry, like genocide. And, <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, in these disaster movies, there are, um, in particular, with the day after tomorrow, and we'll go ahead and start off with that one. And mm-hmm. again, just to reiterate, in case people get it <laughs> confused here, this is a list of films that have left a lasting impact and impression on you. This is not a list of the favorite movies you grew up with. There's a clear distinction. So, in case anybody has any hang-ups about that. But, no, I mean, I I was, and still am, a very um, Genesis. paranoid individual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and in no small part because of movies like this. Um, just the thought of, uh, you know, the end of civilization or the end of the world or the, these kind of mass extinction events have always kind of, um, you know, brought a terror into me, um, completely petrified, um, when it comes to that, um, it scared me to death and to see, uh, especially what we all know, uh, in that particular film, you know, they have New York City not just like entirely frozen, but then you know, a lot of it completely underwater. Um, and, and I think I had this discussion with Peter, you know, about this film. In a lot of ways, it, you know, there are lessons that these films do teach you. And that is, you know, at that point, you know, it's a disaster movie. You know, there's some flaws in it, of course. But that was the point where I kind of had an awareness that we as a civilization, as a species should be careful when it comes to mother nature and especially when it comes to our planet. And it it, it was a pretty (laughs) clear 
overt warning of the kind of catastrophes that human beings can create, um, which is why when we look at today and the world and how it is to have so many people like not think that climate change is like a real thing that's going to affect our lives. I find ridiculous. You know, one of the things I always love about movies in general is that they can show you, um, you know, there are, there are stories and with many stories have meant wonderful warnings and they can show you what can happen. And, um, I feel like, especially with me, scaring me to death, I think works pretty well to get the message across and to see, you know, <laughs> that mass destruction. I know that people, <laughs> Peter had this wonderful joke here that I love to see people getting murdered. Um, only in Game of Thrones. Joke? That I will, yeah, it's a joke. Game of Thrones, that absolutely will. What do you mean, joke? Um, <laughs> okay. Um so yeah, that that's um that's day after tomorrow. So it caused you a lot of like fear as a child. Oh, that's yeah. the reason. Why. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that's, yeah. On an Absolutely. unrelated note, uh the highest ever um measurement of temperature was made in the Arctic. I believe it was about 100 degrees just a few days ago. Just throwing that out there. This, you know, Fun facts. <laughs> fun, fun facts. Um, this movie, it's a, it's pro. Mm, it might be my least favorite Roland Emmerich. It's, cause it's, it's not as entertaining as some of mm -hmm. his shittier films. Right. Like Independence Day Resurgence. Oh my god, we had so much fun watching that, <laughs> that shit. That was a lot of we? fun. <laughs> it was a terrible fucking film. It was so much fun. Can I just uh, say, those two movies, I watched them once when I was little, mm -hmm. and I couldn't watch them after that because they freaked me out. Which they, ones? Independence Day and Day After Tomorrow? Uh-huh. Like, I, oh. well, you I, see? I could not watch it. <laughs> I get. I mean, I can watch it now, mm -hmm. but like when I was little, it no. Okay, if we're talking about aliens, I know it's um Alexis's episode, but I'm just throwing another film I probably should have added, which was M Night Shyamalan's Signs. Um, that was the film that did it for me as a kid when it came to aliens. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. so you like your that aliens afraid of oh water and wood. I had a. I had a water bottle, a water gun under my bed. That shit was primed and ready. <laughs> primed and fucking ready. Oh my god, that movie's terrifying. But I ag I agree to a certain level with Alexis that like these films are terrifying. Well, not Independence Day. Um, but the day after tomorrow to be used because it's like that's that shit where it's like. It happens, and it's like, well, with aliens, you have that stupid machismo, like, America will fight back and win. But it's like, mm -hmm. you can't fight a hurricane. You can't fight a wave of water. You, you know, you can't fight yeah. that kind of shit. <laughs> it happens, and whatever I, I happens that after that happens. caused, like, my first kind of, like, panic attack kind of for me <laughs> I'm, like i'm not even kidding like the part when i don't know the son is like in like wherever he is mm -hmm. and like all of them are just like stuck in there it just like i don't know i don't know like i i don't know what it was it just like but it was it jake chillenhall <laughs> so is that why i didn't know you just wanted to protect then? him oh, okay <laughs> i mean America's a lot of it was sweetheart. pretty dumb like the way the cold would travel like it would visibly travel yeah that was <clears> weird <throat> it's sort of like how in all movies like electricity is visible yeah you know, like if someone gets a look and it's like that doesn't happen in real life <laughs> um oh but let's talk about independence day. so independence day scared you yeah wait real quick can i can't one more thing about the after tomorrow yeah, yeah. The, the sad thing about it is, 
Mm-hmm. Having now lived through the res- our pathetic response to coronavirus, mm-hmm. how that movie depicted how we would kind of react to a cataclysmic event, I mean, <laughs> did it really exaggerate at all how we would react to it and what would happen? I mean, I think about that about every film ever. Like, I remember there were so many films and television shows where it's like, political shit would happen or this or that and people would be like this is so absurd this is ridiculous like this would never happen in real life and now it's just like choke on dick like (laughs) real life is infinitely crazier um and i know this is a show we don't really talk about anymore for specific reasons but i i don't know what was it like the third season of um house of cards I uh-huh. remember a lot of the, the reviews were like, this is, you know, it gets too ridiculous. Da, 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 da. And then Trump got elected. And I'm like, see, you dumb assholes. You're going you're gonna <laughs> to act like this is ridiculous. <laughs> Fucking Trump's in the White House. If someone 10, 15 years ago made a film and literally not even exaggerated an ounce, hell, maybe even pulled back a little bit of the exact events that have happened in this country over the course of like three to four years uh, they would say like this is give it terrible reviews say this is ridiculously over the top this is so stupid this would never happen you know so yeah it's such a shame because like you look at house of cards and all like the themes and all the undercutting between different characters and all this stuff it's sad that House of Cards America is more subtle <laughs> than actual America. <laughs> well, it has that thing where it's like um, all this maneuvering behind the scenes, like when Governor Collin didn't know was that. <laughs> dur, 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 dur. You know, it has all that. And then, but you cut to real life, and Trump's like, no one knows why there's a 19 at the end of COVID. No one really knows. <laughs> If we just didn't test as many people, there wouldn't be as many cases. His genius idea is we stopped testing. So I guess it disappeared. (laughs) Yeah, it's... mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that happened right now. Well, something like that did happen right now. Fucking COVID. So I... Yeah. 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 So Independence Day, you were saying you wanted to ask Moreno a question. Did that really scare you guys? Yeah. Well, it was like it was that scene where, with he, when he, he's like talking to the alien. Oh like, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. So when the alien is like using the scientist, right, as a puppet mm-hmm. to like talk to, um, I think it was the president. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess it really isn't as scary as I probably would have thought when I when the first few times yeah, that I did yeah. see it. You know, <laughs> with with Day After Tomorrow and with Independence Day, those are films that I would catch um, on TV viewings. So that's that's how I would kind of like, you know, back then I would think a lot of us would catch a lot of movies we didn't experience in theaters I, on I TV. I own that one. I think my dad, my dad, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it was a big hit in its day. I think it was 95. So it, it, it was, was the big, biggest like, hit in its day. Yeah, it's still a um, huge hit. Like I think that it it kind of changed formats a little bit. I mean, we wouldn't, we would definitely not have Transformers and all those different movies without freaking Independence Day and what Roland Emmerich did for that. Um, so it did change, you know, a lot of things the way movies were made, and I think that that that's where the the root of all of that was. You know, I, I do One think one could argue uh, you wouldn't have Parasite without Independence Day. Um, are you going to elaborate on that, or are you just going <laughs> to throw that out there? Okay, all right. Just, just clarifying there. Um, no, but I was terrified. I mean that that thing was just pure evil, completely pure evil out mm-hmm. there to annihilate and to exterminate. I guess and. The film? That, I, I will say, look, just mm-hmm. just to clarify about there, like mm-hmm. I had a I had a very mixed viewpoint, and still, because uh, I'm much more skeptical, but mixed viewpoint on extraterrestrial life. 
like the optimist in me is more along the lines of E.T. and Lilo and Stitch. But then we have like the realist and we have those horrific monsters that are Independence Day that just want to like kill us and everything, which I mean, theoretically speaking, it could be one of it's only one of two responses we're ever going to get. So, I mean, yeah, to put in clarity, like uh, being the realist, like if there are monsters here that are human beings on this planet that we find horrifying, God knows what else is, you know, on other planets you know like holy shit <laughs> um but i aka the ocean animals i mean yeah i mean that's that is very extraterrestrial like all the creatures to like. me the film was always too fun to be like scary a lot yeah it, it mostly is it's just for the, the the small moments when we get close to the aliens like there was uh you really do feel like how small. I think it's the third act where Goldblum and Smith are on the mothership, and how insignificant the scale of their their craft is to. But they're smoking everything cigars, else. and they and they bring it down with the fucking <laughs> an internet virus from the nineteen nineties. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It's all. It's Goldblum and. And, uh, but when you're we'll little, welcome to Earth. At least for me, that was yeah, like no. terrifying. Like I said, now it's like it, none of those movies affect me. All, but all I'm gonna say is, have you guys seen Signs? No, because it's oh scary. my god, never mind. <laughs> you guys don't understand fear of aliens. Then you I mean, have what no is it that idea. you don't understand that we don't we don't we really avoided horror because yeah. we. We're scared. <laughs> for, if, if, for this reason, it, because if we can't take this, how, exactly. how do you expect us to take the other stuff? There's, I've, <laughs> seen, I've seen signs and all that stuff. And honestly, like, there's only one thing that scared me to death in, in childhood, but it wasn't aliens. <laughs> oh, it? God. Yes. I don't know what. Don't I don't don't, know. don't trigger it. Okay, that, okay. That, I don't know. It's a whole thing. Is it a whole it's, thing? It's, I don't even know. Yeah, it is. It, it is, is a whole, whole thing. thing. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I don't want to. I guess there's some doors should not be open. Okay. <laughs> no, you don't want to open it. Let's lock it. it. Seal it shut. All right. I'm okay. Yeah, I just don't want to get you know. Which I don't know why you didn't include that movie in your list, but because I had because I didn't see that it. is true. Yeah, I didn't like, see it in my youth. I one hundred percent expected that movie to be in there. But the, here's the thing: the during you know during my childhood, I avoided that movie like the plague. But because it had an impression on you, it, like clearly. <laughs> Even, but I don't know. I, was the imagery that triggered you? Was that from the film or just and like just the fear itself? Like that's what triggered wait, is, me. Is this Uptown Girl? No. <laughs> Okay, then I don't know what movie you're talking about. I I I avoided that movie like the play. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Yeah, that's a hint. I thought he. I thought you loved Mel Gibson. I know, but there's one movie in particular of his that I avoided like the play due to childhood trauma. Uh, what woman? What? I I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're okay. You're opening the door now. Um, uh, yeah, let's the, just let's 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 close it shut. There, it's Passion of the Christ. Oh, that's right. You're a Satanist. I always forget that. Yes, yes, you can't forget that. I, I sleep with the freaking pentagram drawn underneath my bed. <laughs> um, that's why you were cheering during Hereditary. Yeah. I was pl- I okay. applauded everybody in that house. It was the feel good movie of the summer for you. Okay. But you know, to just to, to speak also on you know what Peter was saying about you know the it is it's a goofy movie, but of course yeah. it's a very uplifting film in the end. And I guess the biggest impression on me is two things: it's that I it kind of instilled in me this like hope that as a species, as a you know society, we can overcome such things. This is me, of course, years ago um, as a kid. Um, now, well, there's COVID. Um, but also, it did probably uh, instill on me just how much I love uplifting endings in movies. 
um, which is, I feel that's which ex- a general thing people have, but yeah. Which would explain your deep fascination for one Mr. Steven Spielberg. No, he's canceled. Well, yeah, a lot of his, yeah, a lot of his movies have that as well. Um, but yeah. Um, let's well, see. Where are the what other are... movies? The Lion oh. King? Speaking of Spielberg, let's go into uh, some of his films. We have Jurassic e. Park, E.T. E. You've had a very weird relationship with aliens. I don't know. What's going on there? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> that's That's kind of been... Uh... An obsession of mine at that point in my life. It really was. Um, kind of longing for, you know, contact with life um, beyond this planet because I kind of was not at all infatuated by the people on this planet at all. Um, <laughs> still. Uh, still. Mankind I don't want to live on this planet is nothing anymore. but cockroaches. I am a higher um, being. I must find those on my <laughs> level. An ant That's- has no quarrel with the boot. <laughs> You're planning on stepping on us? Well, I mean, a lot of it has to do with ET. Mm-hmm. And um that movie, you know, for the longest time, I really didn't get at all why I mean, yeah, there's the alien. Mm-hmm. Clearly that that was something there. But um I, for the longest time, I didn't really understand what it was about that film that made me connect with it so much. And it really wasn't, I think, until a few years ago when somebody, I think it was, um, he was one of the actors. What's his name? Peter Coyote? Coyote? Um, Why don't, Coyote? The, the Keys guy. The Keys guy from the movie. The Keys? Um the one of the antagonists in ET oh who where he drops mainly his yes yes okay, yes that okay. guy yeah okay. um and he said that he also didn't understand for the longest time what was it about that movie that um everyone just went crazy for um and i know that in recent circles i know Kyle i think um would probably be one of the people who would say that's good but i I think there are better movies than E.T. Um, and don't really, you know, probably qualify it as a bit overrated. Um, and just I saw that movie in the, the theater. Thing... <laughs> How? Because it was like doing like a special screening and my mom took me to it when I was like seven. I saw it at the Clexco 10. And it didn't have an impact on you? Like, I thought it was a good movie, yeah, but I was just like, like, I don't know, it was just another movie I, I watched. There's just something so special about the relationship with Elliot and with E.T. And what, you know, Peter Coyote was, was saying in, in, in words was is that, you know, those two are kind of the hope, the, you know, the ultimate hope of uh, the best of us we have these two complete strangers with so many differences that are willing to basically bond together as friends and as family. And I can tell you, you know, one of the things that Kyle and I have in common is there were, you know, lonely childhoods. There wasn't many people I could call friends of mine. And um, part of why perhaps I was interested with, you know, uh, aliens was because I really didn't have anyone in particularly my size, my height, my age, that I really had any kind of uh, relationship. So with. you too wanted a phone home. I mean, if you want to put it in that way, sure. Um, Actually, that, 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 I would say he too was Lilo. <laughs> I think well, that's I mean, more apt the, description. <laughs> he too was Lilo. I mean, it is very similar right now that we're thinking about it with uh Elliot and 18 then of course you have Lilo and Stitch uh, um, my Stitch. although with Lilo and S- <laughs> with Lilo and Stitch there is a, a a much more I feel emphasis an overt emphasis on on family um and uh yeah is any of what I'm saying making sense yeah yes um, it is it okay is. all right 
feedback. Because <laughs> no. do you think we not understood? No, we were, well, I'm just we trying were to make sure intently. Yeah, See. right, right. I'm just trying to explain myself here, and mm-hmm. that, like, look, that that moment in ET at the very end that that never fails to just completely break me. And I have very vivid memories as a kid watching that ending and just completely losing it. I think that was one of the first movies, aside from I think um, Toy Story Two, that mm-hmm. made me just ball. Um, cause I was just so touched by that. Um, and one of, you know, I think as far as with Lilo and Stitch is concerned, that relationship as well means so much to me. And, and I think it's like what I view ultimately what the best of us can do is what they did. And to look past those kind of very, you know, clear and vivid differences and, and care and empathize and have compassion. Those things that I hold dear, I learned from those movies. And that's why they matter so much to me. So, yeah. Your turn. Peanut gallery talk. <laughs> Rude. Um, I was going to say, I think E.T. is scarier than <laughs> Don't get Independence me wrong. Day. What, Independence Day? Yeah. yeah. I think it's scarier, <laughs> like be, in the beginning. Be so much. The beginning, the the beginning the was terrifying. Thing. When he oh, takes yeah. the Reese's pieces, and like he's in the dark, like picking him up, and then when he screams and his head like goes up, and it's like. <laughs> 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 Shit's this scary. movie freaked me out, and like. The difference between this one and, like, Independence Day or the other one, I would watch this one constantly. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I I want to say that I can kind of pinpoint uh, my trauma with, like, animatronics to E.T. <laughs> <laughs> but yet you love um, Disney. Yeah. When... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean was like a thing, and it was so scary. But um, I don't know if you guys the ever... ride you mean the ex- the ride the, the experience. Yes. Um, did you guys ever get on the ET ride at uh, Universal Studios? No. <laughs> oh, when you did. My God, it was terrifying. <laughs> It's ET's. There was like a whole like ET room, like everywhere. They were just everywhere, and then you're like on the bike, <laughs> and like because it's like a ride through, and like you're you're on the bike, and then the you have like a basket in front of you, and he pops up at the end. It was so <laughs> scary. <laughs> I I don't know if you guys have seen the dinosaur ride. Um. I'm the, aware of that one. Uh, yeah, it's it was like that, like the big really? old freaking uh, uh, dinosaur pops up at the end, like the big terrifying. Well, not like that. Like it doesn't pop up, but but like the difference is like, it's like right in front of you. But it, yeah, for you, just, it might as well have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just I don't I don't like this movie. <laughs> it's so scary. <laughs> well, I mean, I will I will uh you know Grant Peter in that. Yes, for a lot of it, especially the beginning, at least for me, uh, as a kid, it, it took a couple of tries to get back and watch the whole movie because that <laughs> did freak me the fuck out. I'm not. Well, I mean, lie. I watched like, it I mean, in one go. I wasn't a little bitch, but yeah, go on. Well, I was. I was a tiny little bitch, and uh, I <laughs> ran out the same way Elliot did um, when you know when ET was hiding there. Like I screamed. Mm. So I mean, like that. That's how oh, you know. Oh my god! I gotta make you guys watch recall. signs. This is gonna be funny. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, but I think also with you, like, Alexis, don't you have a particular, like, distaste for the, the, the design of E.T. itself? Yeah. Can you talk about that? Like, no, how that's off-putting? It freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> this is apparently a very deep scar we're discovering here. <laughs> We, yeah. This is the, the 
much like how uh, Alexis described this uh, podcast as therapy, this is uh, our ther- <laughs> right now it's the childhood trauma hour. <laughs> so Alexis, how do you feel about that? How does that make you feel? That was uh, David recently bought uh, like a special like DVD thing for ET. It comes with like it's like a it has like a book and like different DVDs and like the soundtrack in there and all that stuff. I got mad. <laughs> you throw that shit. What if I got mad? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I just like the the reason why I bring that up is because you know e- ET is is a big movie. It was big moment for you know you know pop culture and everything. But you know, ET was designed. To be kid friendly, appealing. It wasn't designed to be creepy or scary. They need to go back to the drawing board then. (laughs) This is an anti ET podcast officially. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, an unrelated note, but in uh, in LA, there was a vintage video game store that my dad took me to. And they had the infamous uh, E.T. game there. And I played it for 10 seconds and I got bored with it. (laughs) (laughs) And moved on. Um, The E.T. game, for those who don't know, is uh, is regarded as the worst video game ever made. Um, Wow. By developers and video game fans alike. So, uh, yeah. 10 seconds um it like et you mentioned et and lilo and stitch and all this stuff they have very similar stories yeah now that i'm and and by by the way when i was picking out the movies that didn't even cross my mind but now that i'm just looking at them and thinking about them they kind of do uh like at, at its core are basically kind of the same thing yeah, you have like a government official and like the government, you know, thing, and you have uh, you have them hunting down um, the the alien in question, and the the alien comes crashing down and meets meets a a variety of youth, and the, this is the outcome, and there's a big chase at the end. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the backbone of both movies. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, let's, let's dive into Lilo and Stitch. What, what drives, what, what floats your boat about that one in your, in your Well, impact? I think it, among us Disney fans and of course Disney Parks fans, um, it's no secret that the character of Stitch is very popular in the community. And at the time, um, you know, I think that was 2001 in the, the early 2000s. It's basically the early years of Stitch. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's just something about the design of that character, um, that is just, I don't know, you're just drawn to it and and you like that character and, you know, that particular, and we all are aware that those years for Disney animation, they weren't the best. (laughs) <laughs> Not according at the to time. Twitter. Yeah, I was gonna say if you paid any attention to my ranked they weren't Disney chart, then the... you would know that's not entirely true. Let me clarify the wording, since apparently some people are triggered. The era of the early two thousands for Disney animation overall was not well received from a financial standpoint and from a critical standpoint from a peter standpoint they can go fuck themselves <laughs> I, I think that's what i can gather um but i have no connection to atlantis or treasure planet um i, I they're they're fine but i or mean lilo and they Stitch. really but lilo and Stitch, yes oh, yeah. okay um absolutely um i mean i, I mean and I believe you did have Lilo and Stitch, Peter, at the top of your tiered list. Uh, yes, I did. So, I mean, that should speak in and of itself to its quality, since, of course, you do say that your your opinion is law, 
and uh, is the end all be all. So I'll go ahead and defer to you to tell me, can lead us in a discussion about uh, Lilo and Stitch. Well, I would thank you in recognizing fact and reality. So as much as I can with you, sure. You know, just I just stroke the ego. What ego? If a fact is a fact, it's a fact. <laughs> fact, fact, fact. Um, this movie is really good. Uh, really? What's, yeah. What's great about Lulu and Stitch is I feel like it's one of the few movies from the Disney catalog that sort of pushed beyond what was expected of them um, and didn't do it in a really an annoying fashion because I feel like, especially with a lot of modern Disney animated films, they try to push beyond what used to be the, um, the walls <clears throat> of what a Disney anime film could be. But they're so, there's such a wink and a nod and so referential. Like, uh, 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 this isn't how it used to like be meta and it's just patting themselves in the back. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Um, uh, I, I actually, you know what I'll say, since you guys apparently hate the film, and I probably like it the most here, with fucking Frozen, where they're like, you can't marry a guy you just met in a day. Get it? Because that used to be all Disney was. Um, it is true, they'll probably don't marry someone you've just met. Um, but with Lilo and Stitch, <laughs> it had such uh, irreverent humor. Um more so than almost any, probably any other Disney added animated film, such a wonderful dark sense of humor. And it was so unbelievably relatable and human in its mm -hmm. story. And again, it's, yeah. It, what's so interesting about it is it's not your typical animated film. There is no great quest to go on. Um, it, the whole, the whole film is a couple days of you know this family learning to become a better family in the span of a couple days and you really at the heart of it but you know you lay on the the beautiful animation and music uh and, and it was done for writing the, and it was done on the cheap too i mean because like mm -hmm. they they mm -hmm. poured their heart and soul into different things and plus disney um financially wasn't doing well at the time either. Their yeah. resources were very limited, mm -hmm. shall we say, and, on that film. And they were able to pull off a wonderful story that is Lilo and Stitch. I mean, you have like the sisters, the sisters, you know, that that's such like a emotional core to the story. Um The sisters, you mean just the one sister, you mean? Yeah, there's Oh, you mean sister oh the sisters, sisters okay. plural. Non yeah. Nani, Nani, Nani and, and Lilo. Lilo. Yeah. They're sisters to each other. <laughs> right. And I was like what what twin sisters? I, I thought you were saying twin sisters. Like, no, no, sisters. sorry. Um, I mean, if you count Pleakley, but that's a different situation. Go Pleakley, ahead. Pleakley, Pleakley, like could, he could get it. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't this took a turn. sure where that was. Know, uh, <laughs> the the humor about of the movie okay. is great. Uh, the music is wonderful. I mean, there's just like a lot of little bits and also nuances with like physical comedy that Stitch would do that is hilarious. Um, there's so many different things with this movie that I think we should give it its own episode. Um, but yeah, what impacted you alexis about this movie i mean it's a good well, we already great... got to the heart of it he wanted an alien he wanted an alien yeah i just wanted a friend oh it seemed specifically <laughs> to be an alien though <laughs> it seemed you felt these earthly beings were too low for you inferior yeah. you need, that wasn't you the needed thing it's like a that superior I, being yeah. to call friend stop it <laughs> The thing was, is how basically how everybody treated Lilo like a freak. That's how mm -hmm. I was treated, like a complete pariah. No one wanted to be near me. That's just the reality. Kind of um, still to this so, day. <laughs> just I mean, kidding. Just yeah. kidding. I mean, at least these days, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> um, so you know, um, at least that's changed. But no, I, I think um, I, I talked about it a little bit before about. 
you know, both the, the, the core stories of E.T. and Lilo and Stitch kind of have the same significance for me. Um, whereas with Lilo and Stitch, though, of course, it being in an animated setting and a Disney setting, I think it really was my favorite Disney movie growing up mm. um, at that point. Um, of course, the earlier ones were like, uh, you know, Toy Story and Lion King, uh, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast for sure. But like Lilo and Stitch, I feel was like, as Peter just said, it was kind of like, to me, like the most down to earth, the most human. And that I think was the one that kind of I latched onto the most. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I remember so clearly after, oh my God, how many years later? And, and yeah, I mean, so much so that I, I mean, I watched the whole series, the whatever the the, mm-hmm. the, the sequels, the whole like show that was on Disney Channel. But did you um, watch? Yeah, Stitch the movie. Yes. Did that you was watch the Stitch has a glitch? Yes. yes. I own did all. Did you of watch them. the anime? <laughs> did you read yeah, the well, original I mean, manga? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, we're, we're getting carried away no, here. We're getting carried. away. I wasn't away. joking on. about the anime. Uh. I know, I know, I know. It, it there's a there's an anime that exists. I I didn't watch it. No. So you're not a real fan. That's okay. <laughs> no. Fake. Okay. Fake Lilo and Stitch fan. Yeah. I'm tired of these posers trying to elbow their way into the Lilo and Stitch fan community. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of normies, get the fuck out. <laughs> Alexis, uh, any uh, thoughts on on Stitch? No. I agree with everything you guys are saying. It's funny because um, at work, like the two top characters are Stitch and Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Stitch, is, Stitch is loved to this Stitch day. Is, I'm surprised. People yell at us if we don't have his plush. <laughs> like they literally are, they get so angry at us. And it's like, you didn't come early enough, sorry. <laughs> or when you when you go to the parks, take a shot every time you see a Stitch backpack. <laughs> I'm surprised they there's don't... not more of a presence with Stitch in the parks, right? Or that, just that anywhere. Saying? I'm surprised they haven't tried right. to capitalize on it more. The only thing that you know, all means great escape. Know. That was the only thing. Well, that... when it came out, they completely did. I think, like, he yeah, was they... everywhere. Uh, right now, he's kind of like the face of Alani. And right, right. The the uh, yeah, and for yeah. those not aware of not not Ulani, like some people say <laughs> Alani, which was the resort, <laughs> the Hawaiian. I'm sorry. You know English is a second language. Relax. <laughs> the the Hawaiian resort um, that Disney has, but uh, Kyle mentioned Stitch's Great Escape. That was a reskin of a horrifying alien encounter attraction that was very poorly received at Disney World because it was terrifying. Um, originally, it was supposed to be based on um, the Ridley Scott Alien series, but then they couldn't get the rights, and then that ended up. Be- it was it was inspired by the Ridley Scott Alien originally, For and Disneyland? then Disneyland, mm-hmm. e- Disney was World, a- yeah, Epcot, right. No, it was in uh, no. It was in Tomorrow, Magic Kingdom, Tomorrowland. Yeah, yeah. Um, they even like during the release well, of. But weren't they? Oh, I'm thinking of. Okay, never mind. I'm thinking of something else. Nah. Th- there was even like a whole year where the castle was completely defaced, and there was like TP all over the over Cinderella's castle, and it said, you know, like in in, in tagging form, it, it said Stitch was here on the castle for like a solid year during the oh, movie's really? release. Yeah. That's I mean, it pretty was this, cool. It was this whole thing. That's... <laughs> when you said that, I legit thought it was disgruntled Disney fans. That were oh, like, no. How oh, dare no. you <laughs> do something wrong? It was done on purpose. The, um, okay. The, from... Yeah, but even that I think now is is going to be replaced with Wreck-It Ralph last I, I checked at, at, at Disney World anything. <sighs> It's but as far as like, it's probably not going to be Rigger It's probably going to be well, Ralph Stitch's great, breaks the Stitch's Great Escape wasn't at all well received either. That 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 location hasn't been at all popular. But even here in California, all I uh, the only spot I think uh, everyone knows where you can find Stitch um, is at the Paradise Pier Hotel. They have a, a character breakfast, and Stitch is kind of the highlight for why people go 
to that breakfast is to see that particular character. But aside from that, where else has he been? Maybe in a parade or two over the years, but not much. On a blue moon, he would show up near the Tiki area, but in a blue moon. But that's it. So it's really surprising how when Alexis says that, you know, that character, you know, is very popular uh, with merchandising, but it's not. You don't see it in the um, cash cow. We had him maybe like during the time of like Black Friday and stuff. We had him maybe like the first week of November and then we didn't have him. (laughs) We didn't have him to like middle of December and people were mad like when i tell you they were mad it's not like oh dang like no like they would complain and we got him in the middle of december he was sold all that same day <laughs> disney fans what? Are were the con- crazy i'm sorry <laughs> you people <laughs> were the con were the confrontations like this mask culture war we're, we're witnessing all over the country is that how tense it was what? <laughs> like people refusing to wear masks culture war. and all that stuff. Is it like the same kind of phenomenon that... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. They were like, I can't believe you guys don't have them, blah, blah, blah. And we're just like, dude, so he's a, bunch a of popular Karens. character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we were like, dude, like he's he's a popular character. Sorry. Like, I don't know what you want us to do. <laughs> Tough, man. Um... Are yeah. there any more alien uh, films in your list? Well, technically Toy Story. There's aliens in Toy Story. That's not really alien. They're toys. That's, there, it's a toy. Just because it's shaped like an alien doesn't make it an alien. Um. Now, if Star he had Wars included the Star Buzz Wars. Lightyear animated film, that would have been a different story. Been, that would have been a different story. Is that on Disney Plus? Yes. It was like your Star Command, yeah. Oh shit, that movie was and the pretty, series. It's pretty good. I'm not sure about the and series. The, I know the movie is on there though. The series should be on there. It was a good. Sh- well, from what I remember, it was good. It, it, it was Patrick Warburton ago. is doing the voice of Buzz in the series. I think that's yeah. incredible. Um, he does a lot of Disney stuff. Star Wars. So, Star Wars has a bunch of aliens. Episode three. Tell us about yeah. the Star Wars. Is it an indie film? I've never heard of it. <laughs> Well, I mean, similarly to like how Kyle and Peter had, just thinking, yeah, different Star Wars movies. Uh, Kyle, of course, had A New Hope and uh, Peter had The Phantom Menace. Um, Yeah, this is, you know, kind of the everlasting story of of this franchise is that everybody has their own beginning, their own entry into, you know, this this phenomenon. And I think that's fucking cool. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, in the shortest way that I can say is not only was Revenge of the Sith one of the most, one of my most fondly cherished experiences watching a movie in the theater. You know, I remember it so vividly, but I think it was the first movie I ever saw twice in the theater. Um, is how compelled I was to go back and revisit it um, in the cinema. And, you know, I think like the initial impression that I had on the movie was when I walked out, I think it must have been, God, 11 or 12, I think, at that point. Um, this is maybe even younger. Um, no, I was 10. Fuck it. Yeah, I was 10. This was 2005. Shit. Yeah, I was 10. Um, and um, I had the biggest smile on my face um just like wow like it felt like you you just watched something completely impossible i just realized it's another connection to genocide (laughs) get it out order 66 it makes sense though oh my god this list is i'm gonna be honest it's very illuminating like i mm, okay it's wait the- till we get to child's play <laughs> oh god <laughs> to holy what? shit and to child's play there's a lot of there's a lot of murder i mean there's there's a shark there's dinosaurs eating people there's a yeah there's a lot of mm-hmm. murder in, in these movies um 
So they've last take what you <laughs> left but the then last there's Jurassic impression. Park where they bring back a species. So and the species murders the people <laughs> that brought them back. <laughs> You know, honestly, this episode I think is is doing the original concept of this series' job. It is supposed to be like what impacted you as a kid and like mm-hmm. left a lasting impact of what it what it does. Right. And definitely these ideals and, and these themes have definitely made a lasting impact on one Mr. Alexis Soto. This is this is good. This is Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the uh, episode three was the very first space opera of of that scale. Obviously, it was my first Star Wars movie. And, and did you I mean, understand what was going on? Well, I had seen the mini series Clone Wars previously, oh. so I had, mm-hmm. so I did have a general understanding of you know certain concepts and certain characters that I could you know figure that they were you know the live action versions of that. Um, Sword go voom voom, gun go pew pew. Basically, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, it, it, every person's Star Wars uh, adventure is a journey in and of itself. And I mean, uh, as far as like the impact that it had on me and what I, I mean, it, it, Star Wars in and of itself is a big reason why I love movies. And um, it, it not only did it get me to go back and watch the whole franchise, but to this day. I'm as you know completely enamored with with this series, and I, it's it's I don't know it, it's one of those hopeful tales. I think that we we need to keep reminding ourselves. Revenge of the very, Sith, not <laughs> Revenge of the Sith, the saga of the Skywalker we movies. Like... <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm trying to be like, you know. Order 66 just kinda... flashed in my head. Did the music? <laughs> and all of them die. A hopeful sign. <laughs> Cue freaking CCR's fortunate son. <laughs> I don't know. This has been very revealing. That's all I'm going to say. As a whole, yes. <laughs> so... It's a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning a lot, aren't you guys? <laughs> Very educational. But when you saw it, you hadn't seen any Star Wars. So Star Wars with just Revenge of the Sith must have looked very different to you. What do you mean? Yeah. Because I that mean, was I all did, you I did saw. The same thing. I did the same thing and I was like, what? <laughs> If the only film you saw was Revenge of the Sith, then I mm-hmm. like you would probably view Star Wars very differently. I guess my it's, question it's, is it's, how it's... did you view it on its own? Because at that point that was the only one you would see. Right. Yeah. Well, by its nature, kind of incomplete because the, the But you walked the, out the story like ends... it, obviously. Well, yeah, obviously. Um, it's difficult to say um, because my and and you, uh, Peter, mm-hmm. you you've been very much uh, you know observant of this. But my particular views of Star Wars have kind of have precariously evolved, even in the, in the time that you and I have uh, spoken with each other and have been friends. I that's a good question. I, I wish I can recall you can i mean <laughs> I, that 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 i mean at that point it was more like i liked it was it more like and that spaceships was cool the lightsaber battles were cool the yeah, music was cool yeah because that's, that's how it was i mean me. it was 10 yeah yeah i was 10 i was three i mean i don't know we, <laughs> i didn't have like i didn't have this like philosophical like oh position of like oh this is what star wars is to me but it's like no it was just I had fun. I loved it. I loved the experience of it. That's kind of how trivial it gets when you're a 10 year old. But it is a bit of a downer you know? for an ending. Yeah, but then they looked at the binary sunset at the end and, and then, the hope and, has returned. And then he heard another young boy his age at the back of the theater bawling his eyes out. And little did he know <laughs> that young boy was Kyle Lyra. <laughs> 
I actually did. But I mean, like, if we're gonna talk about, I know that uh, uh, Peter had discussed how. Um, you know, so what you said with the Phantom Menace mm-hmm. story is that that's what you thought Star Wars was, and then you tried watching the originals, and you're like, "Fuck this shit! I'm gonna go back and watch <laughs> Phantom Menace." Yeah, I didn't have exactly the same kind of experience, but it was a little bit of a growing pains, getting adjusted to watching um, the old films. And I I think I had this discussion with David the other day about um, watching black and white movies or television Mm -hmm. that when we're younger, we have this very skewed um, generalization um, that it's just inferior because of the dated technology and the dated look of it. Mm -hmm. But now that we're you know, young adults, we've completely reversed how we originally felt about such things. So like now the originals look so much more like gorgeous, you know, just to look at as films than, you know, the prequels, which, you know, at the time as kids, like they're clean and they're like, oh, they look cool. But now, you know, a lot of it really hasn't aged all that well. They look very, you know, manufactured and inorganic. It's it's a very different um, perspective as far as looking Star Wars. Or like the different charm that the um, the originals would have or anything like that. Like, for example, like when I was young and I saw The Addams Family, my mom informed me that there was a 60s sitcom that was in black and white. And I was like, ooh, there's a TV show? Let me see. And I saw it. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I, I think this is also interesting because I, to a certain extent, I had that as well. But I also, growing up, watched a lot of tv land oh yeah i, I was there too i mean so, for some things it did work like yeah. i love lucy was one of those things oh, that yeah, i think I always lucy, worked at like um this isn't black and white but i used to love three's company come on knock and knock do we'll be waiting for <laughs> hers and hers and hit Aren't you guys like company big, like Golden Girls fans? Go- oh, I love the Golden. Girls. Oh God, yes, yes. <laughs> but I mean, I would. I also used to love watching the Munsters, and I would watch um, Sanford and Son. Uh, you know, I'm coming, Elizabeth. Um, <laughs> uh, what's it called? Um, where they're the cops. Where it starts like. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, the Andy Griffith show. Not the Andy show. Griffith show. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Andy Griffith show and yeah. the Dick Van Dyke show. Like I, I watched all that shit. Um, oh, uh, the the Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah, I watched a lot of TV. <laughs> so I don't know. I remember vividly, like, two a.m. watching Brady Bunch and and shit. Oh, even even at that time, I was like those. They were too fucking lame for me. <laughs> oh, Jenny scraped her knee. Nee, 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 nee. I was gonna ask Alexis because we share the the Hulu account. Who's watching Frasier right now? Are, oh, I don't know. Scrambled eggs. Are you? <laughs> oh, you know what? No, my, I'm not. my my cousin has the account too, so. She's oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Cause I don't know. There was, there was, Peter and I. Oh, yeah. I think it, on the Disney Plus one, uh, somebody. I was laughing because every time I see it, like scrolling down, I always like say it. Um, it's Wicked Tuna. Who's watching Wicked Tuna? Oh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, yeah. Oh mm-hmm. God. That that's that's my parents. That's my parents. They're watching that your shit. parents. I was okay. cracking up literally every time I see it on there. Like not Wicked. recently, like with somebody watching it, but like it'll it'll come up like if I'm scrolling like trying to find something, and I always just mm-hmm. say Wicked Tuna. <laughs> Like it's just like instinct. Well, every time when I'm scrolling through my Netflix, I see all these novellas and Mexican. Yeah. Well, that, that that's my family. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it's like um, fucking the the haunted hill, the the haunting of Hill House, and then like I don't I don't even know, but there's like a, a rose, and then two Mexican couples. La rosa, la rosa. Yeah. <laughs> No, that that wasn't. I think it was um, the Casa de las Flores. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh yeah. my god, yeah. I can't. I cannot with that show. <laughs> I don't watch it. Just to be clear, that's my my mom that watches that. Sure. But, okay. I mean, okay. <laughs> this is a safe place, Alexis. You can be open about your interests. Uh, Kyle, if you're um so inclined, you know, Peter educated us yesterday about his obsession with what was the show you're talking about? Which with, show? With uh Hannibal? What was it called Alexis? No, the other one. The the trash oh, show no, you talk about. Oh, why mention that? Oh God! Which show? I know it was it was it was awful. With, the uh, Big Ed. Oh, Big Ninety Day Ed. Fiance. That's a fantastic show. Oh my God! He went like on a five minute rant about like you know all the intricacies of the different like programs <laughs> and like and I was like, what the fuck happened to it's Peter? It's such a good show. It's that so was trashy. The worst thing. It is. It is both like a fine three thousand course meal and the trashiest fast food you've ever ate at the same time. It, it manages to be both. It's beautiful. So yeah. it's like having a Big Mac in the White House. Yes. <laughs> a cold Big Mac or a hot? Oh, it's Big hot Mac in the White House. It's hot. It, okay. It's so hot, baby. <laughs> I've only seen the big ad shit. I haven't seen the other stuff. The show's genius. Uh, that's all I'm saying. They need the Medal of Honor for making that show. <laughs> the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, but anyway, uh, Star Wars Episode Three. Okay, so it was just the just the the ships go. Pew, when the and everything like that that got you interested. well i just feel like it yeah and that, that being the Nothing first star wars that. movie and i think it like and of course the impact is as clear as day i mean like look how what came of that and you know a lot of the reasons um you and i started um, talking kind of grew closer yeah, yeah we, it was because of star we wars started talking about star wars and like because we've heard whispers that an episode seven is possible and like drawing Oh, yeah. and we were talking about like an episode mm-hmm. seven happening and then 2012 it was oh, yeah. announced that uh episode seven was happening and like that was like the cusp of what was happening um so our de- our friendship developed during the production of star wars the force awakens so um that's really fascinating i like how all of us have different star wars stories like of how we got introduced yeah and uh, and especially with star wars it's like a, what you were just discussing right now as far as the bimp, the impact on my life all of you guys the this show all these podcasts all these years of recording and, and so you, you know regret the love it, huh? of movies well, well <laughs> you know peter <laughs> every time you know Every time you speak, I think to myself, maybe, perhaps, yes, there's a little bit of regret. You in get that. in the time machine and um, stop yourself <laughs> from going to see Revenge of the Sith. Deb, I mean, but like, kind of the tail end, you know, earlier, it kind of like I, it finally gave me what I've always wanted, which was like a, a community, a group of people who, you know, have, Ooh. you know, a shared interest. Oh, okay, okay, of, of us. I was like, the Star Wars yeah. community is not the place you want to be. <laughs> oh no, fuck them! No, I mean you guys. A lot of this wouldn't happen. I, you know, I think um, who was it, Kyle? When Star Wars Day years ago, I think it was 2014. We did a video, you and I, just talking about why we love Star Wars. Yeah, and that kind of like was for me anyway. That was when I kind of like woke up and was like, okay, this is what I want to talk about. This is what I want to explore even further. I, like Wars. that was like when the the passion of like film, and 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 talking about it really woke up in a lot of ways. So, so you yeah, could I mean, say the Force Awakened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you could say that. Okay, um, Star Wars. Yeah, we. Needless to say, after many episodes of this uh, podcast, we like Star Wars. <laughs> I'm surprised. Peter hasn't mentioned Last Jedi yet. There it is. There I'm, it ho- is. I'm holding it. I'm, I'm going to throw it out nope. in a surprise. Okay. It's going to be a surprise when I throw it out there. It, Char- it'll come up naturally, I know. As it normally does. It's yes. like me It's like br- me bringing up James Bond. I mean, it's just it's inevitable. Uh, it's a secret agent. You, you, you probably never heard of him. Um, 
Child's Play. Let's got let's dive into Child's Play. What is it about Child's Play that that is this why you hate children? No. Um I mean they're just generally annoying and uh gross and off putting, but that's a separate discussion. The doll or the children? <laughs> the children. Um I watched it about three months ago and the Oh, I should be clear, this is the original child's play, not the remake or whatever that came out last year. The what? In case people were confused. <laughs> Wait, why would people get no, it's the original. It's the original. There's no such thing as the remake or whatever. I I watched this. I haven't thing. watched it. I haven't watched it. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. It stars your your boy Mark Hamill. I know. Your boy is your boy. Their marketing was <laughs> the boy, the boy, the boy. Oh um, the breakfast that Andy made he for made his mom one. while it was while it was sweet, it was just giving me anxiety because all that shit was going everywhere. You're, what? You, you don't remember? Okay, he, in the beginning of the movie, he was making his mom. <laughs> you breakfast. gotta you gotta set this shit up. Like I don't. <laughs> just, just throwing shit out there. Like I'm just supposed to follow it. Uh, what are you? Are you talking about like? In the was beginning it? of the movie, when he made her Charles breakfast, was, when he made her breakfast, that shit okay. was giving me anxiety because like, okay, that shit was getting everywhere. Um, but anyway, Child's Play. Let's get on to Child's Play. What is it about this movie how that did, drove you? First wild? of all, how did you watch it, and why did you watch it? Because if you're afraid of your own shadow yeah. at this age, why are you watching a murder doll movie? Well, that would imply. That I was aware of the kind of movie I was getting myself <laughs> oh into. My God. Did you really just think like, oh, there's this doll movie? Chucky. Well, Rugrats. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be friends. What was I supposed to think at that age? I mean, you see things like Toy Story or Rugrats and like you see like, you know, dolls or and they come to life and like generally you, you you're. I would assume, compared to what I would see, you know, I, I, not what I got, clearly. You didn't um, know what you were signing up for. No. And, and did you just stumble upon it, or did you throw it on, like, see? That's what I'm trying to recall. I didn't throw it on. I think it must have been one of two things. Either it was one of those situations where I was, like, flipping the channels, and I just happened to catch it, or... Maybe it was that my parents had rented it mm. and they were watching it. And there were a lot of movies that they rented that I would watch, well, half watch with them. Either I'd fall asleep or just, I don't know, stare into the abyss. Um, I think it must have been that where we would have like a family watching of it. And um, I had nightmares over that stupid doll. You watched it for longer, from, like beginning to end. No, no, no. How, I mean, how far I in mean, did you get? I can't recall. I mean, you have to understand. I don't think it's the movie. I have. For okay, go on. Sorry. I have so desperately attempted to repress any images mm -hmm. or memories of this experience mm -hmm. that I have successfully forgotten how much of this movie I even remember or how much I even did see. What I can mm -hmm. remember was murder. <laughs> what I can remember was blood and a knife and pe kids being stabbed by their own dolls. I mean... I'll tell okay. you this, like, from... I was very young when I saw that thing and... As most kids with, you know, plush dolls or whatever, I kept those things at a fucking distance from that day on. And you have no idea how traumatized I was by such a thing. Because this, I mean, in the movie, I think it was like nobody really believed that, you know, this doll was alive and that it was killing people. 
And I was so convinced for the longest time that I was being followed by this maniacal thing. That, and by the way, I, I was never in contact with the Chucky doll, but I was so scared of it that it was like this invisible thing that would just be around me um, whenever I'd be alone. And for years on end, I would just like be so scared that, oh my God, is this when I'm finally going to get killed by this doll that's like putting, <laughs> so, following my, my entire life? So this, this, it was bad, guys. This was bad. So if I were to approach you as a child and say, be careful, Chucky is watching, you would pretty much like lose sleep the entire week. Even to this day, when I, when I come across anything remote, Lead to the likeness of Chucky, I twitch or jump. I, like I, I, I so smell. A, I can't. I smell it to the table coming. Thank you, you bitch. <laughs> I knew you were gonna fucking do that shit. I, 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 I can't even so like bring myself to must, like be your hellhole for you. Well, I, I can't even bring myself to go back and watch. Oh my that god, movie. have you seen those costumes where it's like fucking, it's toddlers, in in the little Chucky costumes. No. It's so scary. It's videos of parents. They dress their like little toddlers in Chucky costumes, and they're running. And it's like, oh my god, I don't know. That's it cute. Me. It's cute, <laughs> like when it's up close. But then from far away, you just see, you just see Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I read a comment where someone's like, "I would, do not dress your kid up like this. I will punt well, that little yeah kid <laughs> across the." But we, I mean, I, I remember it also had you know a f- it impact on other family members i remember the story where um one of my aunts um one of my cousins had gotten i think a chucky doll uh, i think it was either a birthday gift or a christmas gift got a good guy and my <laughs> and my aunt saw it and she threw that shit in the trash <laughs> immediately she threw that thing away like she was like and, and you know some of us mexicans can be a little bit you know I don't know if, if God fearing is the way or a little bit superstitious of supernatural things, but like we don't fuck with that shit. <laughs> you, you throw that away and get away from it as soon as possible. Um, so I, I, I don't fault her for doing that <laughs> one bit. There's this other story that I think it was another cousin that had a very creepy interaction with one of those dolls where, you know, it, it was put in the closet that one night and then that she kept hearing noises coming from the closet i have a similar um, story too <laughs> tell it tell it tell it tell it what happened uh well it wasn't with me it was with one of my cousins who her cousin had the doll and she had like she was sleeping over at her house and she had two beds because like her and her brother would sleep in there and but she she liked to keep the doll in like a dresser that was in front of both beds. And so my cousin was like, no. <laughs> and so they put it in the closet and like, I mean, it could have just been that they were like playing a trick on her, but like they like woke up in the middle of the night and the doll was like in the dresser and stuff. So I don't you know. You see, you don't fuck with that shit. And you know what? It's like, I know that, 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 of course, somebody was playing a prank or something. I mean, God, I hope. But I mean, like uh, that th- those kind of stories fuck with me mentally, I and I I, I can't. You guys I can't. Are gonna receive a package one day of a uh, of a certain doll, and just one day it's just gonna show up on your front <laughs> and you watch. No, 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 no. I-, I refuse. You watch how quickly I throw that thing on a fire. <laughs> I, I I can't. Yeah, no. I seriously can't. I, I actually it didn't watch this movie when I was little. Cause you didn't? No, because I oh, knew well, yeah. what it was about. And I was like, no. And I didn't watch it until <laughs> maybe like high school. Um, It mm-hmm. was in like one of those summers where I was with my, with all my cousins and stuff. And I would like spend a week with them. And uh, they decided to rent all of the movies and have a Chucky marathon. Oh, so you're a a Chucky connoisseur. (laughs) And so we watched, at the time, I think there was only three movies out. So, I mean, it was like a while ago. And so... Oh, so this uh, is before Bride or Seed or anything like that came out. No, those were... We watched those. This was after. No, during. You saw the, 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 the doll sex? Yeah. I... Because... 
Nice. The second one is the bride one, isn't it? No, it's child's, child's play. play. One, two, child's three, play. bride, seed. Oh, okay. Okay, then no, yeah, it was the first three then. Um, but yeah, we watched all of those and they were just making fun of me. <laughs> that laugh. That laugh, has, I never forgotten the sound of that laugh. It must be what the devil sounds like. That, that I, I, I'll tell you. Also, um, since we're, you know, a lot of the stuff here clearly had a lot of phobias. Um, a lot of people here would know I'm death, deathly arachnophobic. Oh my God, I can't. But um, in addition to that, um, I, I feel like maybe my, at that point, very young, I, had a, I was very afraid of the dark. But maybe it was because I could, I don't know if I was just, I would convince myself that I would see that disgusting doll's like smiling face, like appear in the dark. It was that bad that it even caused a side phobia Brad, in me you of the dark. Are I are so lucky that we're quarantining right now because <laughs> I would have gone out, bought a doll, gone over. And then when you'd be like, oh, hey, can you bring me some water? And then while you, you go and get me water, I would place that shit inside your closet. Oh my god. And I would just, and just wait. Eventually, you would need something from in there. I remember, um, uh... I would cry. Yeah. I literally would cry. Would I, that that wouldn't be funny. Oh. I remember when I was little, like I said, I hadn't watched these movies yet, so just the actual doll is like the only thing that scared me because I had never seen the movies before. Uh, but the, um, there was like this uh, mall in Tijuana that we would go to and um, they had a Hello Kitty store. But right outside of the Hello Kitty store, they had a, like a little like stand where they were sell like uh, different like toys or like backpacks and like dolls and stuff. And they had like three Chucky dolls like facing the window like to sell them i hated it it was the worst thing and they never sold because it's still there <laughs> still yeah where i can go pick them up <laughs> you're just so, you're just f putting fuel to the fire <laughs> so and this is like before spencer this was a mistake thing, so it was so i was little little it, it was the worst but yeah, Spencer's is like traumatizing it, to go I, into too. I, I feel your guys' pain in this regard because I remember uh, 2004, um, I went to go see Scooby-Doo Monsters Unleashed and it, like, it was a good time. I was like, Scooby-Doo, I like Scooby-Doo and all that shit. The theater next to it was fucking Passion of the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't. You? I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel I so Moreno and and all that stuff. I feel your pain. It, it's just it's just shit. What Peter? No, I don't know. Dude, I'm at a loss for words. Okay. Um, I so don't see play. uh violent films as a child. So I don't know. No, it, it, okay. It's not the movie. It's it, it, it it's uh it was a newsreel. You don't know the story. Oh, why he's scared of it? I know the story. Oh. But I'm saying That's in general, it. all you people are watching. Well, I guess the only one was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. But that's that's something else. <laughs> um I'm, I'm with SpongeBob on on the opinion of Texas because of that film. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, so Child's Play terrified the living shit out of you. Um Speaking of terrifying... How many of these were because they terrified the shit out of him? Um, well, at least all right, three. Let's move on. In the, there's more. So, Jaws. Um, and you saw this one as a kid? This, yes. Oh yeah. This is God. one of the ones that uh, my dad showed me, of course. Uh, but he knew you, right? Tie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he was doing it on purpose, if I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, Thanks, Dad. Is this why you can't swim? <laughs> I know how to <laughs> swim. I, 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 I mean, I would assume most people do, but 
the older I get, the more I realize most don't really know how to swim. So that's interesting. I, I mean, I had swimming lessons. Um, well, I mean, this one isn't going to be too much of a surprise because this is what most audiences experienced uh, when this film was first released was this fear of going in the water and not really knowing what's in there. You know, I talk a lot about the ocean and how much I love it. it again, in many ways, it's, it's a double-edged sword. I love it, and then I also am fearful of it and fearful of what's in well, it. you should. The water consumes like 75% of the planet. Yeah, and we only really know 5% of what lives in there. So That's fun. That's scary. <laughs> That is so fucking scary. Um, no, but sharks are terrifying. They really and I know that the whole like study is and everything like they're they don't, don't really like like to eat us or whatever, but that, that really didn't make this movie any less terrifying. <laughs> and I mean, like, no matter um I think anytime I even get into the water, like if it's close to the ocean, if I get, you know, a swim, that's what one of the first things that comes to mind. It's like like Every single time I'm, you know, on in the beach and I feel like this weird movement around me, I'm like, oh, fuck. Wait, I mean, I, I just have like that knee jerk reaction. I, I got to say, um, the ocean is fucking terrifying. Mm hmm. Like, I didn't even see Jaws as a kid. The ocean is so scary. Like, I don't. Oh, God. Like, it's like you can barely move. In, in water but there's shit all around you that's it, it's like an alien fucking world and shit can it is an alien can world. just crawl up your your leg and there's always slimy shit around your feet when you're at the beach <laughs> like it's the ocean is scary okay and then like even if you can look underwater it's so dark and you be, barely see shadows and then you don't see shit till it's up close no no i don't the ocean is some scary shit um I, I just had to throw that in there. I agree with you on that. I don't even think Jaws did that to me. I just think the ocean's fucking scary. <laughs> yeah. Same. So what got you so scared about the water? Just the same way with Peter Alexis? Or you always just didn't like it? Me? or was well, it, I just... Yeah. I mean, I'm like a paranoid person in general, so like not knowing... Well, I mean, hello, have, we, have you met me? I mean, we're kind of <laughs> <laughs> the same in that regard. <laughs> So not knowing what's around me just freaks me out. And then even then, seeing if something is around me, but I don't know what it is. Like, it could be a fish, but, like, you can't really tell what it is. It's just, like, it's too much. And then, um, I mean, I've had, like, full-on, like, panic attacks. Like, my first, like, legit panic attack, like, to the point where, like, I could not breathe was because I didn't want to get in the water and they made me. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I don't know if they, like, noticed it or I don't know. I mean, I was, like, crying, but, like, I had to, like, because it was, um, it was in Cancun. So, like, obviously, when you go to Cancun, you're, like, by the ocean. Like, that's why you go. And... They wanted to go, like, snorkeling and do all this crap. And I'm just like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why you guys brought me. <laughs> and um, there was, like, this other... They have kind of, like, um... Uh, they're, like, little theme parks, but they're not theme parks. Um, mm -hmm. But you, like, you can go, like, ziplining and do all this other stuff. Um, but there's, like, a river that leads into the ocean. So they're still, like... Oh animals in there like there's still fish in there and stuff and they lied to me they were like there's two rivers one of them doesn't have fish and the other one does and i was like okay well we for sure are not gonna get in the one that the one that does but no <laughs> there was like a giant fish like next to me like by the stairs to get in and i i like I, like i went up to my ankles and I, I just like freaked out and my dad came over and he like had me get on his back and I like went through the whole river like on his back and how old are you this was after high school <laughs> oh shit 
<laughs> so it wasn't that it was like maybe five years ago <laughs> i was freaking out like it was so bad like i i had never experienced i mean i had experienced that before but not to that level and just like i I was also just mad that they like made me do it <laughs> and like they didn't care <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm like, I'm, I hate the water. I've gotten like a stung by a jellyfish and not, mm-mm, nope. It's scary. I mean, I like it's swimming. So scary. Swimming's like awesome, but like the ocean. That in a pool. <laughs> in a pool, oh, yeah. Yes. But yeah, I will. Even I'll then, be in it's a pool. like. Mm. Did you guys have irrational fears that there was a shark in the in the pool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 See, I you know, never shit got could in, happen. In um the pool at the what's it called? The one that was behind my house. Um The Lion the Center. The Lion Center. How it's like super deep and when you get like lower and lower it's just like pitch black and Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, that's the I thing. Got... The way it's like you can only see a little bit in front of you and then there's like shapes in the dark, like oh yeah. my god. Mm-mm. And it's not like on land you can run away. You can't I guess you can swim in the ocean, but like you, you ain't swimming faster than, yeah, <laughs> than running. I don't know what it is about because I, I never was afraid of the ocean or terrified of like that. Like while people wanted to stay in the shallows, I wanted to go deeper <laughs> into the ocean. Um, it, it, I don't know. The ocean always fascinated me growing up. Well, it's like to a degree, right? It's so like I think I, I'm more along the lines with you, Kyle. In this regard, then I but both uh, Peter and Alexis, where it's like, and then this is also where we can, uh, you know, glue in Nemo in this. Um, I agree. Like, yeah, there, I'm fearful of it and respectful of it in that regard. But I've always had this very weird um, connection with the ocean and the beach. And you're right. I mean, I've always been fascinated. I mean, are you looking by... for the heart of Tefiti or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was always fascinated with the environment. Um, but I always really, I've always associated um, going to the ocean and the beach um, and the sights, uh, the, the air... And just, you know, the, the actual environment there, like, to me, that's the most in touch with nature that I think I'll, I'll ever get. Yeah, but nature's fucking scary. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, of course, be respectful of it, of course. I mean, it's a, I think there's a healthy fear in that regard. I mean, you're combining two of, the, two of the elements. You're combining earth and water together. I mean, it's just like mm-hmm. one of those elemental things that is that is really strong with the bond between right. humanity and, and all that. So that is really, really close knit. And I think that that's like where you get like a natural element out of it. Yeah. And, 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 and the child, uh, you know, one of my childish child dreams was to like, you know, in, in a perfectly safe way of doing this, obviously was to like, I've always wondered what it would be like to, be in the ocean and to just swim around and of course you know reality is different obviously but with nemo and watching that film i've always said that that was to me one of the best films in terms of like realizing a whole world i didn't want to say a whole new world because then you know what's gonna happen we have kai yeah it's okay i did it for but my favorite scene in nemo was uh, the field trip scene where we have uh, Mr. Ray going through the coral reef. And the the impact that that left, uh, what? But you don't remember a few scenes later when they dropped the goggles into the deep, dark depths? and that That's fucking... a different scene. Yeah, but that's the shit that stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, no, but I mean, what stuck, obviously, yes. I mean, we have, we have Marlin, who is a fish who is afraid of the ocean, and rightfully so, I get that, yes. But... Let's go back to the playful coral reef for a second. Um, it's all slimy. And... It hurts when it, no, you but, scrape but... your back against it. Yes, obviously. It, it, like a bitch. Reality is not at all what it is. But in the animated world, like that, it took me 
to a place that I've always wanted to be. Um, and, and I don't know. I guess it, it's not playing well with the panel here. Uh, it's like you must be some kind of a kook. I'm sorry, but like, you're on the wrong side of history. You were wrong about oceans. You were wrong about ET. I, you're wrong about genocides. You, you, you're wrong about a lot of things tonight. That's all I'm saying. But, so what else is new? Um, Alexis, you were going to say something? Um, it's just funny that like the ocean but you saw jaws and it didn't <laughs> do it no yeah that's why like both nemo and jaws are in here because like jaws made me scared of it but the nemo made me fall in they love canceled it. out so it's it <laughs> no it's more it's kind of like um the you know the the fish from the last airbender the yin and yang it's like kind of like both of those two like swimming in a dance for all of time that's kind of how i feel about the ocean mm-hmm like not one, not that they cancel each okay. other out, but like both of so them. So you are get alive. a spiritual sense when you're by the ocean. Yes, yes, it's, it's very a much spiritual so. experience when you're at the beach and all yeah, that shit. I, I feel you. I feel you. Um, yeah. Unrelated. Are those magical map uh, ears that you're wearing, Moreno? <laughs> ah, you were wrong. Okay. <laughs> so finding Nemo. Um, <laughs> Wait, did you include well, for, um, Finding Nemo? Uh, yes, the list is Star Wars Episode Three. I was just talking about Nemo. E.T. Jurassic Park, Child's Play, Independence Day, Lilo and Stitch, Jaws, Finding Nemo, The Day After Tomorrow, Pokemon, the first movie, and Toy Story. Okay, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Okay, so what is it about? Fine, is it the ocean, pretty much? That that. I mean, that's kind of basically what I was. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so any final thoughts? The music on Nemo? is fantastic. I think it really helps with like. Well, that that's why that that's why I'm, I I I say that Nemo is one of the best uh, film examples of realizing a world because it's not just to me what I would consider groundbreaking animation back in two thousand three with how. The ocean never looked that good in animation, never. Um, but then, of course, Thomas Newman's score, still to this day, one of my favorite movie scores ever. It it does bring it to life. It is I'd beautiful. Say. Like it, it definitely captures that airy, like openness that is the water, and it and it mm-hmm. and it kind of makes it more mythical in a sense with his with his uh with his compositions and you could feel like i mean it is the the example but nemo's egg when you get to nemo's egg and you feel that kind of like mystical thing of like the sense that the world is open uh you get that sense with nemo's egg and you get that intimate thing so i could feel you i, I feel you, you um, feel me dog i i feel you dog uh <laughs> oh my god Speaking of Pixar Toy Story, let's get on to Toy Story. If you're done with Nemo. Yeah. Um, how far did we get into this last week with this movie? Toy Story? Was it just like barely? Yeah. Was it barely mentioned? Or did we go in depth with it? Or it was just like. I mean, we've talked about Toy Story in depth. The and entire Ozean. podcast. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean. I mean, just quick example. I had a Woody, a Buzz, as, as many of the toys, Potato Head, Slinky. I mean, I think we all did, um, which can tell you how big of a movie it was. I mean, it's as old as I am. <laughs> like, this is kind of like the oldest friend, uh, or the oldest movie that I've had with me. Damn, you're so, old. So, three quarters of us are the same age as this movie. Old it, fart bitches. Um, Fucking yeah, grandpas. We, we do, we do own, uh, we did own several of the toys. Gonna break your yeah. hip if you fall. Amber alert, bitch. <laughs> Amber alert. <laughs> I gotta um, say, I, I, I want an Amber alert. I feel like that's, sometimes I fall and I just don't want to get up. <laughs> I want help. <laughs> I feel like an Amber alert would go a long way even for me. You think they would come even though? <laughs> it's just like 
You're a youth. <laughs> I need. I don't got the. Are you talking about this. life alert? Oh, life, <laughs> life alert. There it is. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <you're> <laughs> <alert>. not a <laughs> different thing. <laughs> An Amber <laughs> Alert is with people who are kidnapped or go missing. <laughs> you see, that's how old we are. Oh, I'm sorry. We're forgetting shit. <laughs> no, I'm, that's I'm not. I'm so confused. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> life Alert. <laughs> I was talking about Life Alert. That's Kyle's fault. He said it first. He tricked hey, me. Hey, but you... Hey, but you you uh, went along and you just didn't even question it. You're like, Amber Alert, yeah, it is that thing. I trusted you, you trust and you one. betrayed my trust. <laughs> Who's the oh fool? The fool or the fool who follows him? So that was Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> Good talk, guys. <laughs> Anything else on Toy Story? Anything deeper than Amber Life Whatever Alert? <laughs> Ain't got a friend in me. Don't get me started, Peter. Don't dun, get me dun. started. Miles, miles of off home. Let's move, man. <laughs> Alexis, I don't know. Did, do you have a Toy Story story? Toy I don't story know if I've ever story? heard your like. A story? A story, yeah, Toy Story like, story. story. <laughs> Like, um, like, was it big with you? Oh, yeah. I, I assume had, it was. Um, yeah. I didn't have Woody or Buzz, but I had the, um, the speaker with the microphone. Oh, that's cool. Mic. Yeah. And I used, to, mic, I used yeah. to play with that one a lot. Um, I want to say I had Slinky, maybe. Um, but no, yeah. I mean, it's Toy Story. Like, I feel like that's like forever going to be like a part of us. <laughs> Like, it's just, like... Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, even, like, making, like, our Pixar list and stuff, it was so hard to place Toy Story anywhere, because it's, like, it's the best one, but, like... <laughs> it wasn't hard for you to place out. <laughs> what you... Oh, my God. You want to know more? We had a whole Pixar ranking show on Fantasy Fair a few months ago? Fuck. Yeah. I was gonna say weeks. I'm gonna be honest. Ago. This really reminds me of the Last Jedi. In that, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I just need to. I thought it you were. I thought you were gonna go into like a deep analysis of how like this whole process is very much no. like the Last Jedi. I okay. just had to bring it up. Gotcha. Um, Least expected. But I think it. that's it. I um. I mean, in when I watched the second one, the, I liked the second one a lot more growing up. Um, and like the Jesse scene was like, pfft. it destroyed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's why I said earlier, like the earliest besides E. T. Like Toy Story Two is one of the other movies that made me cry as a little kid. That scene mm -hmm. because of that, you know because of that scene. Yeah, so it's 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 hard because. It's just, like, Toy Story has just, like, always been there, so it's hard to, like, pinpoint, like, moments. Right. But, but yeah, it's, I mean. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I know people like Peter would laugh and giving him the excuse to laugh, but it's almost as if, like, you know, characters like Woody and Buzz have kind of been, like, almost like our companions in life in a lot, and you know, in a lot of ways, <laughs> you know? Like, they've been with us our entire existence. You know, they're just there, which is like I think why the uh, the song you've always, you've got a friend in me has always been so, you know, one of the best songs uh, in Disney canon. I think. Oh, we also did a, a songs uh, show on Fantasy Fair recently. So why was I not invited to that? Uh, ask the host. Host, what? Are you not the hostess <laughs> with the mostest? Not anymore. <laughs> Kyle, you you're the host of the Fantasy Fair. Yes. <laughs> why Ky, Peter is asking why he wasn't invited to the songs ranked list. Oh, what the fuck do you know about music? You see this? <laughs> this is bullshit. 
I know more music than all of you. I just don't, I don't, you know, just because I'm not, I'm labeling shit. All of a sudden, I don't know music. Probably a fucking musical genius in comparison to all three of you. Okay. <laughs> what 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 instrument sure. what instrument can you play, Mr. Soto? Exactly. Excuse me? What about you, Moreno? I play a recorder. Exactly. I, I, I Nothing. To. And I can play Kyle the, the guitar doesn't count. <laughs> so, you know. Huh. She said she could do a keyboard. A little bit. No. Kyle plays a couple of instruments. They don't count. <laughs> oh no! Why did you no, do this? No, no, oh, no. Pokemon, the first ever movie. That Ooh, was yeah, something Pokemon, that Pokemon. she's talk about. Pokemon. Go, go, hurry. Oh, Alexis, I'll I'll let you take the lead on this one, then I'll jump in. Talk about it. Oh, I mean. I don't know if I watched the show, like, before the movie, but this movie, I mean, it was so sad. (laughs) It was so sad. Um, I remember watching this one in Sailor Moon a lot. Um, But yeah, no, it's just, it's really sad. Like, that scene... And it's funny because I hadn't seen it in a long time, and then I saw it at Target, like, a few years ago, and I gave it to David for his, uh, for Christmas, um, and we watched it, and, yeah, the whole time I was like, dude, this movie is just really upsetting. (laughs) Why did we watch this? Um, but yeah, it's funny, I don't know. Well, you know... A few weeks ago, I, I came across this GIF of one of this, what I think one of the more um, remembered moments of this movie that made me think about it for the first time in a long time, but then also kind of clicked what about it hit me so hard. Aside from, like, of course, it was like kind of sad with, you know, Ash and everything, you know. Um, so, and I have it right here. Question, okay, but, question. Is this the movie where. Pikachu is hitting himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the first theatrical Pokemon movie. Um, I think it, it it should take chronologically in the first season ever of Pokemon. Um, I did, I believe, watch the episodes of this season before the movie. Um. Yeah, but I don't know where exactly it takes place in the timeline. Um, but it's it's around that era. Um, but I, I think it's still as enjoyable if if you don't watch the the show oh, yeah. as a movie. I think it works mm-hmm. just fine with it. Um, and you know th- this in and of itself is a different. Uh, it's an interesting topic discussion because, um. It seems, Moreno, you do have at least some knowledge of this franchise. Kyle and, and Peter have no contact I don't give a fuck. at all. How? With, with, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I, I never understood it. I, I never mean, understood it. I would catch like an episode or two, but that's because it, it it followed immediately after freaking Ninja Turtles. <laughs> uh, um. I I would watch a couple of episodes here and there. I have seen clips of this of the movie in question, um, but I was never like really big into Pokemon or anything like that. I just never cared. <laughs> I rem I I re- I mean I remembered the show like I've seen some of it because better cartoons were around it, um, and you know sometimes the TV would be left on. But I just remember it'd be like, who's that Pokemon? And then, you know, it's Charizard. It's like, fuck, don't <laughs> yell at me. Jeez. Um, 
Like, I remember that shit, but like, I don't know. <laughs> I liked the um, see so the sassy so it, it was an annoyance. So it, it 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 was an annoyance for you basically. And then remember, it, it's like anime, and that's kind of it's kind of weird to me. See, that was my relationship with uh, the Iron Giant when it was but on Iron Cartoon Giant Network. Was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Semantics, different opinions here. But let me, I, I they played Iron Giant so often, especially during the Thanksgiving break, where it was like, fuck you, Cartoon Network. I want to see more besides this Iron <laughs> Giant movie. Come on. I would so get bored good. of that movie. What? <laughs> I know. I know. Wow. Right? It was so, oh my God. It's I mean, so amazing. <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, I mean, I can't speak for Alexis, um, but uh, it was a big thing. I mean, I I probably watched the show for longer than I think most people I know. Like, I want to say at least 10 seasons of it uh, I would watch. And that was like long after most people, I would think, I would say dropped off. And then, of course, there are the games and there are a lot of movies um, like but there was Sapphire something very and diamond and yeah 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 shit. I played a lot of those and the, the games are fun yeah but there was always something very special about this first mm-hmm. movie um, so the premise is we have uh, a a uh, engineered Pokemon uh, you know birth in the laboratory alongside um, cloned basically a, a clone army of uh, other Pokemon that do exist. And their struggle to find uh, some kind of a paradise um, because of how the world looks at them and how kind of they're outcasts and they feel as if they're outcasts. Um, wait a minute, Peter, what were you saying about the twins that you liked? They're, they're, they're flamboyant. You mean Jesse and James? I don't know. <laughs> Team Rocket? Yeah, sure, them. Team Rocket? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. They're they're blasting off again. They had a little they had a they're little not... kitty cat. He was sassy. That's Team Rocket. <laughs> there we go. It was a sassy little kitty cat. The one that could talk. Yeah. Well, how do you think it was sassy? <laughs> you look at me like oh I'm weird? What do you <laughs> I like how out of, like, (laughs) Sailor Moon and Pokemon, the one thing that he remembers is a cat that talks. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) It's not my fault. This is a common (laughs) trend in anime. It is not my fault. Then it should be your cup of tea. So you've always been attracted to cats then, huh? Little kid cats. (laughs) Um, No, but yeah, this movie was really good. Um. Yeah, and I, 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 I didn't like watch the show a lot. I did watch like the first season, and then when it went on Netflix, I rewatched the first season and then didn't continue right. again. Uh, but I mean, my best friends are like huge Pokemon. Well, Susan, yeah, that's I mean, her life. <laughs> she's her Disney is Pokemon. <laughs> And then oh, David no. is, yeah. And then David is a huge Pokemon fan. So I've always been around. Oh yeah, we it. yeah. So we did a review last that last year of Detective Pikachu. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was big fan of, of Pokemon. Did Ash um, ever win? I think he, did he like, catch I don't them know, all? twenty years after the fact. Did he ever catch them all? <clears throat> I have no idea. Because that's the main goal: catching all. If the you Pokemon. saw ten seasons and he never fucking caught them all. It's kind of a waste of your time, don't you think? Yeah, uh, this is where your inexperience of anime is on full display. <laughs> oh, you they don't to enlighten me. They don't end. They go on forever and ever and ever. Think of like The Simpsons or SpongeBob, where it's well, just that's it, another it, it keeps reason going and going and going. It. I need endings. Well, I mean, right? I mean, to each their own, right? But the in most animes, so let's say, I mean, it's what. 
20 some years later, maybe 25, well, not 25, like 20, 22 years later after the fact, um, over two decades of, of uh, television and, and Ash is still 10 years old. I mean, that's the logic that we're dealing with here. So, I mean, it's like, um, does he ever win a championship? I think once, maybe. Not in the 10 seasons that I saw. I think what the fuck down the road. What the was he doing for 10 seasons? He was competing in championships and he, he advanced in some of them, but... Um, I, yeah. If he can't get to me that, that shit done really in 10 was... years, he doesn't deserve to be oh champion. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's not the very best. He's not the very best. He needs to find a different job. I'm sorry. At some point, anyway. you gotta call it quits. Oh my god. <laughs> what? The gift that I was talking about that I'd, I'd come across was this uh, wonderful quote from, you know, Peter's kitty cat, Meowth. Um, so Meowth... His there, name there's, is Meowth? There's Meowth. <laughs> yeah. That's the name of the Pokemon. Mea- yeah. Like, like... <laughs> I feel like I think you you're, just blew you're the alien in this. Meow. I think what you just blew fuck? his mind. <laughs> who doesn't know that? Like, who doesn't know that? So when they were naming them, they just didn't give a fuck that day. I mean, I didn't... I, was, I wasn't... I didn't grow up with Pokemon, but I knew Jesse James, uh, Misty, uh, Brock, and... Ash and all that stuff. I know Pikachu, Meow. I know a Togepi. Pikachu. Togepi was my favorite. Pika Pika. I know, you know that. Psyduck, Onyx, Psyduck Staryu, so cool. Pidgeotto, <laughs> Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Charmander, Wobbuffet. There's so Wobbuffet. many of them. I mean, yes. Yeah. That, that that was Susan's yeah. nickname. <laughs> Wobbuffet. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, there was a reason, but I don't remember. You're just speaking an alien language now. Um. So the quote that I was um that I had come across was: "So you have Meowth, and there's also his clone. So you have two Meows. Um. And this is toward the end, the the climax of the film, when like." there's like mutually assured destruction going on and it really hit me you know all these years later uh what about that was so impactful um and it really has a similar theme with some of the other films that i'd mentioned and here's the one that um that it was it says and i think alexis you'll remember this most people i think bring this one up uh where, where meowth says to his clone um we and of course you know if you know the voice yeah, then yeah. you can imagine how it comes across when he's saying it but of course it, it was one of those moments of clarity where he says we do have a lot in common the same earth the same air the same sky maybe if we started looking at what's the same instead of what's different well who knows which is kind of the struggle that you know all of us as a people, as you know, a species go through, you know, so, and it's eliciting, it's eliciting laughter in Peter Martinez, uh, <laughs> because this is funny for whatever reason. It came from a motherfucker named Ma- Meow. <laughs> oh my God. He's still hung up on the name. Oh my God. I'm sure Susan would have some words with you if she heard this. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna calm down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's not funny. It's so like, funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, okay. that stayed huh. with me, and that was kind of who I am, basically. So, yeah, <laughs> and crickets. <laughs> Crickets. No, yeah. It's, I mean that that didn't stay with me. The thing that stayed with me was him dead and Pikachu being oh, like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah." That of course that's most people like. Yeah. So Ash died, turned to stone, and there was like a mass grave crying going on. Yeah, that happened too. No, that that I mean he, that that was heartbreaking. That was traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't Pikachu talk? 
Yeah, he was, like, helping Ash, but, like, Ash is, like, on the floor dead. No, but, like, didn't he talk? Huh? Didn't he talk? All he He, says is Pika Pika. Yeah, all he says is his name, but, like, when he uses his power, which is, like, electricity, and he's trying to, like, revive him, it doesn't do it. And he's, like, yelling, like, crying, like, wake up, kind of, sort of, but, like, saying his name. (laughs) I guess he was. This wasn't might the be very an best. interesting to the table, then, Peter. If we ever oh, throw it back God. in your face. <laughs> Wait, do they ever actually train the Pokemon? Yeah. Yeah, that's the show. That's literally the show. They they catch okay. them and then they train them. That's kind of like it's like him building it. up his team type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys play Pokemon <laughs> Go? Oh, yeah. I never I did, do. no. I was so... I mean, the last I remember of Pokemon Go was this embarrassing attempt by Hillary Clinton to register people to vote. They called it Pokemon Go to the polls. That was <laughs> hilarious. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Peter. Oh, no. <laughs> See, I think this just proves me right. <laughs> in my uh, non-caring of Pokemon. His name was a Meow. <laughs> uh, Is that the last one? Yeah. I think. There's Jurassic Park. The last one, I think. Oh, Jurassic Park. But, I mean, Park. that can be summed up that could be summed up in I liked dinosaurs as a kid. Dinosaurs <laughs> I mean, are that's kind of cool. uh Were you one of those kids that used to know all the names? Oh fuck no. <laughs> no. Uh, I just I thought was, they looked cool. <laughs> I used to know all the names. Now I do Stegosaurus, Brontosaurus. Spinosaurus. What the fuck Asaurus? That's my particular favorite. I didn't watch that movie when I was little. I watched it later. But I got on the ride and it was scary. That's probably why. Well, I mean, like, my parents loved all of them. So, like, I would always watch, like, Jurassic Park, The Lost World, Jurassic Park 3. Like, yeah. I don't think I remember the third one. Alan. Um. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, we could go ahead nauseum about Jurassic Park, but I'm pretty. Yeah, I feel it's pretty apparent what I mean. The impact that it had. I mean, we've had multiple yeah. podcasts before talking about Jurassic Park. So, are you excited for Jurassic World Dominion? I mean, I think universally we all were kind of bored to tears with Fallen Kingdom. Oh my God. Right? I was mad. Yeah. What are you talking about? You were mad that that movie made you feel something. It was so it was so stupid. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it was pretty it was like, dumb. And then it was like a Scooby Doo episode in the middle of it too. Yeah, P- Kyle said like it turned into Scooby Doo really by the end did. of the movie. It was oh my god! I was literally I couldn't stop thinking about it after we finished it, and I was just like that was so stupid. Like. I was I was so <laughs> angry and I was just so mad that they like ruined this whole thing. I don't know. It was ugh. fuck. <laughs> that was I mean to me, I can truly say that was a waste of time. That whole or watching that movie was a waste of that time. That was the first Jurassic movie where I'm just like, I f- I just I hate this because I enjoy yeah, it. like completely. Dress uh the uh, the lost world in Jurassic Park three and I even enjoyed um Jurassic, Jurassic world. world, but with that that was the first Jurassic film where I'm just like okay I'm out like fuck this <laughs> like uh. and like I mean take away like the fact that they stayed in like a place where people actually live. Um, I think to me, like, the dumbest thing was people advocating for them to stay alive. Oh, my God. Right. Like, to me, the best scene of the movie was the opening where Jeff Goldblum says, kill him. Let him die. Bro. I mean, (laughs) I 
I know. And then they bring them to the, and then of course that's, but that I mean, little that fucking could have. Girl. Oh my God. <clears throat> she let them loose. Yeah. Anyone that dies now due to a dinosaur is specifically blood on her hands. Well, that's the point, right, of Dominion is like now it's going to go full balls of the wall, like insanity with dinosaurs, like living side by side with with humans. I think that's just so stupid that it might work. (laughs) Like we might have a good time in the movie theater. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's just it becomes uh onward <laughs> with dinosaurs oh like... i thought you were saying like <laughs> onward with shit <laughs> no 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 not, not like that but um, yeah basically well i think the best ex- yeah the best example i feel is like independence day 2 yeah it's just so crazy stupid and it's sh- it's shit but it's enjoyable and hilarious like that to me like independence day 2 um and the room, it's called the room, right? Yeah. Um, not room. Like I always get those two confused. Um, those are examples of movies that are so bad they're good. They're entertaining. That's what we hoped the Inhumans TV show would be. But so often is the cases where pieces of shit happen to also be completely boring, and that's just a deadly combination. Like Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, Fallen Kingdom was because <laughs> it was. It... It it did the same shit in the new shit that it did. It wasn't as, it was just boring. It didn't go. To me, what it felt like. It, Whereas no, it didn't. And it, uh-huh. it's it's like somebody clipped all the Jurassic Park movies, put them in a blender, and then just crapped out whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, so much of it's so boring. But with like the whole like, hey guys, we gotta live with dinosaurs. We know. A pack of velociraptors, you know, picked off little Jimmy on his, you know, way home from school last week. But, you know, this is just <laughs> the way the world is now. You know, we, we got to coexist with them. Like, oh, God, if they, oh, that would be so great if they still had, like, dinosaur activists. Like, leave them alone, man. <laughs> they're they're part of nature, too. And then he, like, they're just T-Rexes just in in the forest or some shit like that gnawing like that would be hilarious i'd buy that for a dollar <laughs> for only for a dollar especially since dominion's going to bring back the whole cast right like yeah, everybody's going to come that's, back oh that's even better because then you'll have that perfect juxtaposition of the perfect first film and then this just like weirdo C movie garbage. Um, I'm going to franchise this. Actually, I'm getting excited. Yeah. I'm getting excited thinking about it. I think that's going to be so. And then they, they said that like dominion isn't, isn't supposed to be the end. It's supposed to be the beginning of some, of more to come. So (laughs) in space, Oh I, I would I would bet that that that's the Jurassic Park sequel I want to see. Dinosaurs in space. Dinosaurs reclaim the world and then they try to escape, or hum, humankind they become, tries to escape. They become on, on a fully ship, fully sentient. They could talk now. They've evolved. Now Are we going full action. Planet of the Apes? Yes, yes. I think that I think they might do that. I know that that's. That's the first movie Universal put back. Right, it's. It, I think they're they're about to go back and filming that movie yeah. right now. Yeah, um, they were filming it. They probably would have been done filming it by now. If, yeah, if not for the whole COVID thing. A bunch but of movies would have been done filming. The dumber the better is all I gotta say. Go <laughs> fucking go for it, Colin Trevorrow. I mean, when you're like five movies in, especially with like how forgettable and dull the last one was. Go for it. Just do it. Want to go nuts? Let's go nuts. I got nothing else to say. Well, that's um that was my list of movies and I think um I think you all learned a lot about uh me. I feel that was pretty evident. Um oh and yes. He, and yeah. He loves the ocean and genocide. 
So um, this kind of like brings an end to our four part series, Peter, as uh, you know, you are the, the person who came up with this idea. Yes. Um, how do you think all this went down? Terrible. Truly terrible. None of you listened. You all did your own thing. Terrible. <laughs> your guys' faces are so funny. <sighs> Yelp. <laughs> okay. Um, oh my I think. God. <laughs> <laughs> I think it went pretty well. I think all these lists were very insightful. There was quite a few interesting picks. Uh, that definitely uh threw me for a loop. But then, you know, I heard your guys' explanation. It's like, oh, yeah, that's why they are the way they are. Uh, um, yeah, I really, I think, I think it accomplished what I think it should have been. And I think that's good. I li I, I've enjoyed this. I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah. Yeah, we got to. We gotta pick each other's brains a little bit. I mean, I think that was a a win. I know what kind of doll that I'm sending each of you. This was just a Alexis. ploy to be able to torture you even more deeply and psychologically. <laughs> um, no, it was fun. It was fun to talk about movies that. I haven't thought about in a long time. <laughs> For the most part, a lot of these movies have never been brought up on the show before. I think like Jingle All the Way, that was fun. Because that's, um, that's, a, that's a banger right there. <laughs> Matilda. Um, and then movies they never even heard of, like Santa Claus, um, which ended up being a horror movie. <laughs> that was the scariest um, movie. Guys, you don't know the half of it. This is the scariest <laughs> movie. That? By the way, the hot chick that was a by surprise. By the way, Moreno, oh God, the thanks, thanks. <laughs> just, just, uh, uh, just to you're reiterate, welcome. showing um, you some uh, culture. <laughs> culture. <laughs> uh, oh, that's what we're calling it. <laughs> Alexis is gonna get a Chucky doll. Moreno is gonna get an ET doll, and Kyle will get a Jesus doll. <laughs> A Jesus doll? That, you know I have that's one. It. I know, but your Jesus doll is frick, frick, uh, freaking cool. It's, a, it's like a step away I'm from gonna Jesus. I'm going to put him on a... I'm going to put him on a cross. A, Don't worry. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> I think that's as good as any uh, a place to to end it. Um, I, for one, am very appreciative that we had the opportunity to do this. You know, with the the whole social distancing going on and the pandemic, we've had to really get a little bit more creative in terms of uh, you know the kind of shows that we're doing. Um, of course, I don't know. A lot of us had a lot of really interesting ideas, and we were seemingly doing like all of them all at once. Um, so that kind of got a little bit hectic in, in dealing with it. But I think um, in my view, we are producing some of the best content we ever have. I, I really think that these conversations that we're having with each other are getting into our inner psyches more so than I think the standard programming. If it had just been a normal year with, you know, regular film releases and reviews and, and, and all of that stuff. But considering all that's going on in the world and the, the, the kind of programs that we're talking about. And of course, you know, with, our, with the ranked shows or our lists, but this also was a nice way to break up that format of having to do one because you know when when peter first approached about doing this this uh, idea he had 
you know, thought it was wonderful for all of us to do it in one episode, all four of us with our lists. I think we could have done it. And <laughs> we could have, but I think we would have, um, we would have died in the process. <laughs> Would have been about eight hours. Some people stream for eight a, hours. That would have been an investment. <laughs> I mean, we 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 do have eight hours. It's just that they they're broken up into four episodes, yeah. four parts. I think it works. I think it's good. <laughs> I think we can use this like a maybe as a template for further types of shows like these well, instead of it like cuz we yeah. have one in development that's right that's right uh which we'll announce some sometime later but like i think this is a wonderful template that way we don't over exhaust ourselves because we can all agree that the the list shows like let's say the the top 10 of the year shows are without question the most exhausting episodes to do Those all year. we cannot change we have to i can't i can't wait until episodes. all of us unanimously have sonic the hedgehog in our top 10 oh my god why you haven't seen it so? i don't well that's that's that that's an interesting question i don't know if we're doing a top 10 peter wants to do a top 10 but i don't know like what 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 can you do with a top 10 to 2020 we are not the Academy Awards. We are not cowards. If we, whatever is released in 2020, we watch it, we rank it, okay? None of this pansy ass, oh, there was a pandemic, so not a lot of movies were released, so we gotta push it back. Bullshit. Whatever we whatever saw. Whatever was the true test. Whatever we saw, we saw, and we rank that shit. That's where I stand, anyways. How many films do you think, you guys? Have you hit five films for 2020 yet? I mean, that depends on what you define as a film. Eh, a lot of things are films. A TikTok isn't see. a film. I have like eight. Da, there you go. You can hit the. You can hit a you ten. Got, you got. You got two more. Yeah. What about you, Moreno? Like two. I have to think about it because I don't remember. <laughs> you haven't seen Sonic. You is it zero? No, that's an onward. Oh, that's. I true. wouldn't even want to like on it like. I have no interest in seeing Sonic or Birds of Prey. I may oh, just too. have to because I have nothing else <laughs> to see. Birds of Prey, he remembered? <laughs> you know what? I, I've, I've seen five films this year. Technically speaking, Hamilton can count yeah, as a film. I guess, Dropping on Disney Plus July 3rd. So Alexis just lit up like a Christmas <laughs> tree. Um, <laughs> it has a chance of your so number we know one movie. What, Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll make I hit it 10, work. and I didn't even, I forgot to include the five bloods, so that's like 11. Ooh. Three. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> forgot it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Did anybody watch Fantasy Island? No. <laughs> Did you? No. Okay. Oh, have you guys seen 365 Days? No. Have you? No. <laughs> have you guys seen Artemis Fowl? Fuck no. no. Me neither. Wait, there, there, was a, there was a sequel to The Boy? The Boy too. What the heck? Boy year than ever. Are they going to release Candyman 2? Or the Candyman remake, as you said? Well, After all of a sudden, people are in the movie industry are starting to put out trailers and say in theaters. So, I mean, I don't know. I'll believe it when I see it. I, I'm still not convinced that's going to happen, but maybe. I'm not either. Yeah. The big tests will be Tenet or Mulan. 
we were supposed to get uh, The Conjuring 3 and then Halloween Kills as well yeah. this year. Well, I think Halloween Kills is supposed to release a trailer soon. So like mm-hmm. I said, they're they're banking on, I guess, before the end of the year. Should be good You to know what go. the highest grossing movie of this year is? Um, Onward. It's... No, it's fucking Bad Boys for Life. Bad Boys for Life. I think the surprise about that is that it got good reviews. Yeah. People seem to like it. I've never been like a fan to, uh, of like the Bad Boys movies. But still, I mean, Will Smith in a good movie, that's rare. Yeah, it's super rare nowadays. I don't know about that. Have there been any Well, uh, yeah, go movies ahead. that premiered since COVID? Like on a streamer or some shit like that? At some point, you think that they have to just drop New Mutants someplace. Just dump it. Uh, um, there's, They haven't talked about it yet. We'll see. Yeah. Conversation for other days. But overall, I think we're all happy with this series. I think uh, we learned a lot, and we hope listeners uh, enjoyed it for whatever it was. We got plenty of content here on Red Spotlight under uh, with Avatar, Shield, and uh, more stuff coming your way. Don't forget, also, we have Fantasy Fair, Bond and Beyond, and To the Table. We have Tron Month right now, all uh, in our Red Spotlight family. Stand to the spotlight here, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.